All better. <laughs> if you know how germy some places and items are, you'd probably be responding the same way. And as the weather turns a little bit, we're officially heading into cold and flu season. Germs harder than ever to avoid, especially if you have children, mm -hmm. grimy, germy children in <laughs> the house. Fault. April, you went back to your alma mater, yes. the U of A, to find out what we can do. Uh, yes. to deal with the germs. Yeah, so the question here is where are our kids picking up these germs? Okay. So earlier this morning, we put a poll online on our Arizona's Family Facebook page asking you, what do you think the germiest sports equipment is? Soccer balls, basketballs, noticing I'm not touching any of these now. <laughs> okay. Footballs and baseballs, you gotta guess? I would guess, I would guess baseball because of all the handling. Also, look at the baseball I brought in, and these are yeah. online. It is disgusting. It, so it, It's not sparkly, no, let's say that. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Directly from my house. So here's what our viewers thought. An overwhelming majority picked the football and the basketball. Okay. And they are absolutely wrong. Oh, Yeah, okay. it's actually the soccer ball. No! So second is the baseball. I know, you're a soccer mom, yes. right? So why is the soccer ball the germiest? Take a look. Uh. Dr. Charles Gerba is a microbiologist and professor in the Department of Environmental Science at the University of Arizona. But you can just call him Dr. Germ. I mean, that, that's, I, I've been called worse by my wife. For decades, he's studied the spread of germs in our environment. He knows where the germs are. And if you ask him, what does scare you the most? Uh, I actually, uh, going to a playground. That's right, not a public restroom, not a doctor's waiting room. It's the monkey bars because you can find a lot of bird bacteria uh, that could make you ill on monkey bars and that. Um, it's really public restroom for birds. Little hands touch those monkey bars, then move on to the swings. Oh, swings are bad too. Oh yeah, uh, particularly with small children in that. Uh, they can get bad, they're holding on to it, and their bottoms are in the swings all the time too. So they tend to get contaminated too, particularly with small children. Kids really are the germiest. In general, they don't wash their hands enough and they touch everything. But it's what Dr. Germ found on their sporting equipment that might have you reeling. Uh, we found like soccer balls and baseballs get very contaminated. All of them have fecal bacteria because they're rolling on the ground where uh, animals have uh, defecated and that's. That's the thing. I'm, I'm going to have to wash the soccer ball when I get home now. Nobody washes their soccer ball after kicking it through fields where dogs have been and then passing it around. Yes, they are. And then our kids touch it. So that's wonderful. So yeah, super gross. That totally makes sense. I never thought of that. Did you know that? No. <laughs> As he puts sneeze his hand on, on his face. Cue the sneeze. <laughs> soccer balls and baseballs are the most contaminated sporting equipment, according to Dr. Germ. I think it's gross. I think we're going to be keeping the soccer ball in the garage from here on out instead of in the house. Great idea. Keep those germs outside your home and everyone inside stays well. If you don't want germs to come in your home, wash your hands or use a hand sanitizer as soon as you walk in that door because uh, you don't want to bring anything home. Oh, he does. So that is the very best advice that I got from Dr. Germ. Have your kids and you also wash your hands the moment they walk into your home. That way, no matter what they picked up on the monkey bars at school or a shopping cart, soccer balls, the spread stops before it makes its way into your home. This is how germs spread so quickly through schools and classrooms are contaminated when kids are sick. But also, Dr. Germ said, so kids are spreading the cold and flu, vi flu virus on the playground without even seeing each other because they switch out for recess and it's left behind on the monkey bars. Oh, really, so there's really nothing you can do next, about this. No, he said hand sanitizer and washing mm -hmm. hands. He says technology's come a long way. And I asked him, I said, wasn't there kind of some controversy recently about hand sanitizer? He said they have made them so much better. Okay. He's a big believer. Okay. And he says they are great. You need to be using it, uh, you know, before you walk in the door and uh, your kids should just be using it a lot if they're not able to just wash their hands. Yeah. yeah. Well, so. the thing is, everybody has to hear this message. The right. teachers, uh, every single yeah. parent of the kids uh -huh. in school, yeah. and it's just not going to uh. happen. Yeah. So he said, you know, uh, classrooms are particularly germy. This is, I thought, interesting. Particularly younger kids' classrooms, fifth grade and below. And I said, why? And he said, well, uh, from fifth grade on, kids get older, they hit puberty, they start taking better 
care of themselves, better right. hygiene. They're washing their hands more. Yeah. It's those little ones that just, they just you know, don't get it. Yeah. It doesn't <laughs> matter how many times no. you tell them. They're really. going to touch mm-hmm. everything and they're yeah. never going to wash their hands even as, as well as they should. And the hands so. in the mouth. Oh, I mean, just yeah. everything. Yeah. So it's, so it's, it's yeah. true. Kids have cooties. Oh, That's true. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> always, always have cooties. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. All right, but so the soccer ball did surprise me. And it is disgusting. And so, you know, if you're not going to take the time to clean your soccer ball, I don't know who still is, but no. Have kids wash their hands afterwards. <laughs> but then also, I think it's just a great uh, piece of advice. Just don't keep it in the house. Okay. I mean, my kids, they bring it right in the house. Mm-hmm. And start, uh, no, it's right. staying in the garage now. Yeah. Yeah. Poor it's Nate. Nate's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, Olivia's not ball. a sick person in her house. I well know. Right now. The and double so whammy. She is listening closely. So tomorrow our germ series continues, and we head inside your home. Not your home. Okay. should, Olivia. <laughs> oh, boy. So what is the germiest room in your house? How about not the, the bathroom? Mm, might surprise you. Mm. How about the germiest thing that you touch in your house Ooh. every single day? The doorknob? Day. I'm not going to tell you. This is called a tease. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but no, Ooh. but no, Ooh, you're wrong me. on both of those. <laughs> <laughs> you're wrong really? on both of those. Uh-huh. Well, those are good guesses. Yeah, mm-hmm. because, you know, the home is the easiest place to, to make you sick because we just talked about how everything yeah. comes in. It spreads incredibly fast. Uh-huh. And so um, we're going to talk about that Ooh. and what you need to know because, the, you know, the, the end result here, we don't want to get sick. We yeah. want to 